Hi, this is a follow-up to my latest video where I showed infrared leakage from my free cheap green laser pointers. Why is invisible infrared a problem? Is it really invisible? Won't safety glasses protect against infrared? These were some of your questions I'll try to answer in this video. In short, your eyesight could be in danger. Powerful lasers will damage your eyes. Always use laser safety glasses, especially when using reflective glass in front of them and invisible lasers as I do in this video. In the previous video I showed how one of my infrared lasers is very visible to the camera while another one isn't. This made me curious. Are they then both invisible to my eyes without safety glasses on? This is of course not recommended to try. Do as I say, not as I do, but under controlled circumstances I had a short peek at these laser dots without my safety glasses on. The 980 nanometers laser is completely invisible to me, but to my surprise I saw a faint cherry red line from the 808 nanometers laser. What is going on? Do I have superhuman vision or was I just scammed by an eBay seller who sold me a weak red laser? Well, while it looks weak and dim to my eyes, it sure has some power to it. Here I demonstrate how it charges paper and even melts plastic rather quickly. But what wavelength is this then? Visible light only goes up to around 700 or 750 nanometers according to common sources, so 808 nanometers is considered infrared, not visible. Luckily, it's easy to measure the wavelength as shown earlier, so I did a quick test with the infrared laser and the wavelength is confirmed. This truly is an 808 nanometers laser. The seller didn't scam me. Huh, so I've got superhuman vision. Nice. Um, not really. The human eye is most sensitive to 555 nanometers. Nice number. Easy to remember. 555 nanometers is a yellow-green color you may recognize from high visibility clothing. Our eye's high sensitivity to yellow-green makes it very visible even at low light. Fluorescence is also part of the brightness from these clothes, but that's in a different video. If the sensitivity around 808 nanometers is 0%, I shouldn't be able to see a dim red dot from the laser at all. In reality, our eye sensitivity at 810 nanometers is 0.00018%, so it isn't zero. At an extreme brightness, like a 200 mW laser, we can actually see the 808 nanometers color. At a more everyday brightness, it's not visible, so we usually call it infrared or near infrared. Our eyes are not digital and will not suddenly shut off from one wavelength to another between red and infrared. It is a gradual decline in sensitivity over range in the near infrared wavelength. The 980 nanometers laser is completely invisible to me, so the possible 1064 nanometers leakage from a green laser will also be impossible for me to see. I would like to show you how the 808 nanometers laser looks to me, but my cameras record the dot as a violet or white light, not a deep red as I see it. So I could mimic it with a visual effect in my video editor, but that would be boring. Let me show it with an actual laser instead. I have butchered this keychain red laser and will underpower it with only 2.4 volts. This way I should get a dim red dot. Yep, that's not far from the experience with the infrared laser. It just should be more like a line instead. Yes, that's it. This is very close to how the dot from the 808 nanometers laser looks to me. Just for comparison, here's how a 660 nanometers laser of the same 200 mW power looks like. This is the big issue with infrared coming from a green laser. Either you don't see it at all, or it looks very dim. But it can be more than powerful enough to burn your retinas without you even blinking when it hits your eye. Not that the blink reflex is fast enough to save your eyes with powerful lasers anyway. Don't let your retina look like this after playing with a poorly filtered high powered green laser. But with a green laser, isn't there also a bright green beam following the infrared? So what's the problem? Just avoid the green beam and the infrared doesn't matter. Unfortunately, it is dangerous to think like that. Using a green laser without an infrared filter, you can end up having infrared by itself. First off, the infrared beam is spreading more than the collimated green laser beam. The lenses inside the laser can't focus the different wavelengths to the same point. 
Notice how wide the infrared spread is on the IR card at a short distance, much wider than the thin green beam. Another case is if you drop the laser and misalign the crystals converting the infrared light from the pump diode. Then your laser will emit little to no green, but a lot of unconverted infrared. Green lasers also tend to be inefficient in cold weather, so if you use an unfiltered green laser to point out a star on a freezing clear night, you may experience that the green is dim due to cold conversion crystals. But the infrared pump diode is still working fine and pumping out a lot of infrared. Risky without an infrared filter. Another risk is windows with an infrared reflecting film or coating. These are common in buildings with a lot of glass surface or on cars to keep the infrared heat coming from the sun out. It's not a good idea to shine lasers at reflective surfaces, but if you shine a green laser on such a window, the green laser light can go through while any infrared leakage can be reflected back. Maybe into your eye. Don't assume that the green and infrared beams are always in the same spot. Alright, but my safety glasses will protect me against stray infrared. Are you sure? Let's test my four laser safety glasses. It's a bad idea to point lasers directly on safety glasses. The beam can burn through and render the glasses useless. I'm using my least powerful green laser for this and will keep it constantly moving so it shouldn't destroy the glasses. First up are a pair from Wicked Lasers. Not expensive, but meant for low-powered green laser pointers. Let's see if they block infrared too. Mm, no, not at all. Lots of infrared detected on the card. It's the same with their more sporty looking glasses. To be fair, they are not advertised to protect against infrared, only some visible wavelengths, and only OD2+, which is suitable for power up to around 100 mW. My blue glasses are meant for red lasers, so don't make much sense with a green laser pointer. I just want to see if they protect against infrared. Nope. Now these are my best pair. They have lots of markings showing what they protect against and how much. They should block both green and infrared. Let's see if it is true. Ah oh, yes, this is what my eyes want to see. Nothing detectable goes through. These will protect my eyes in the case of a mishap with all my green lasers, infrared filtered or not. Nice to know, and just confirms for me, and hopefully for you too, that expensive safety glasses are worth it. Guard your priceless vision when using high power lasers and be aware of infrared radiation. Please. Hope you like this closer look on a safety issue that may not be so obvious. Part of it is literally invisible. I feel good learning more about infrared and how to deal with it from making this and the previous video. If you feel the same and want to learn more about science without buying expensive stuff and dealing with the risks, I have a nice tip for you. Brilliant.org is a problem-solving website where you can learn to think like a scientist by performing your own thought experiments. They have just launched a new course called Science Essentials, where you can learn more about for example the scientific process and measurements in an easy to understand way. I'm a fan of science and always like learning more about it. If you want to learn more too and believe in active learning, I highly recommend you go to brilliant.org slash brainiac75 and sign up for free. As a bonus, the first 275 people using the link will even get 20% off the annual premium subscription. Then you can do more crazy stuff without any safety warnings from me. Before I tease you with the topic for the next video, I have a premiere for my channel. For the first time ever, I have patrons supporting my channel. Are you ready to see the names of some awesome and generous people? Roll the credits. Thank you so much to all of you. Thanks for having my back. You're giving me so much needed confidence to carry on making videos. Alright, time to end this video with a little teaser for my next video. It's time for part 6 of my series Exotic Elements vs Magnet. Yes, I have finally found and been able to afford 5 new elements. Can't wait to test them near a magnet and show you the beautiful and beastie samples. 
Remember to click like if you like. <laughs> like the video enough to watch this far. And maybe even subscribe for the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.